Same deal, but now sharpen sudden and smaller points of impact. So even if I, if I had Ian down for a second, if I hit, for example, with my shin, I can hit in a way with the shin that's kind of long and lingering, or I can just hit a small aspect of my shin. But of course, the ball of the foot, see, this is not that bad, not that hard, but it's not comfortable, right? That's already hurting. So you want to move with. What's very often going to happen when it's sudden, small, and sharp is that when you get hit, you're going to kind of flinch up, and then there's a delay. So there is still value in moving late rather than not moving at all. So I'll give you an example. You can give me your, uh, lift up your elbow, yeah. So if I kick Ian on the rib, he knows it's coming, just, and just stay there. If you do that, you continue to feel it. The problem is he's kicking you at the other time, and then your wholeness just collapses and freezes. Now, take it, you're gonna wait maybe like two seconds, and then do anything, roll away, move, slide, do whatever you want. But wait about two seconds. One, two, you start to move. Right? Even that feels better, because you can hide rubbing it, touching it, instinctively protecting it. I'm kicking the same spot, now watch. Now close your eyes. As soon as you feel it, just go away. It's just a little bit quicker. It's never, don't try, don't give yourself the task of thinking you're gonna, oh, you're gonna be out of there at this, ride that impact. It'll happen on occasion. You'll turn, you'll see it coming, and you'll go whoop, and you'll matrix through it. But the majority of the time, you're gonna be getting all this interference, and you're gonna get one in the back, you're gonna try to forget about it, or you'll be otherwise preoccupied, and then, oh, it's boring its way into your soul, and you just move away. If something governs your attention, if something draws your focus, move away from it. Run away from the pain bravely. You gotta keep your body moving. Otherwise, you invest in freezing, and you're just gonna get overwhelmed, and it's just gonna feel like you're getting beaten down. Does that make sense? All right, let's go. Person one. So, what can we say that we notice aside from it sucked? But concrete tactical observations. You don't you know, always moving all the time. Move, yeah. Move, yeah. 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 There can be value. There can be value in doing things only for biomechanical exploration. Playing very soft, very safe. However, I believe, and this is a huge point, there is nothing wrong with not wanting to. Saying, I'm a little bit vigilant. I've got to be functional tomorrow. I'm military, I'm law enforcement, or I just, my life experience is such, I don't want to. Maybe it doesn't feel right today. Maybe I don't like that guy. Maybe this guy's kicking too hard. I don't want to. You need to respect your limits. So when instructors say, learn to volunteer for bad positions, it's okay as a drill. And you can put drills out there where you say, I encourage you to do it. But don't enforce it. Because if somebody doesn't feel like doing it today, they gotta respect their limits. So you can play like this if you want to, but nobody really did. Nobody wanted to today. Didn't feel right because of the stress. You could, somewhere in between, play injured and wait a little longer than you would to see what it's like to get surprised, if it's comfortable. But you could also say, you know what feels best is always kind of seeing both people. Mm -hmm. And you were doing that in drill one right away. And for me to say, no, 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 and I've seen this many times as a correction, no, 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 you gotta let them ambush you. Look, there's value in designing a drill that way, but if people don't wanna partake that way and they wanna cheat all the time, Captain Kirk style, right? You, you, you cheat all the time. Even if it's unwinnable, you cheat. That's a better reflex than learning how to not respect your limits. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, most of you saw that it never felt good to be flayed out in a star. So when we look at stuff in Sistema, there's great stuff. There's a movement called the bicycle. The bicycle is a fantastic movement for learning how to be efficient with your body. It applies to working with guns, staying low under a line of fire. It applies to being pinned on walls or on the ground when I'm being held down by the ankles and the arms and I, I don't want to waste energy lifting, so I go here. But I see people teaching the bicycle in ground stomp positions. Saying, relax your body, flow underneath, offer your body. This is stupid. Everybody wants to protect their body. It's human nature and it's a good reflex. It keeps your stuff protected. Keep moving, invest in movement all the time. When we look at the bicycle, it evolves at higher levels to a helicopter. The helicopter is far more applicable to this. The helicopter when I'm being ground held is not good. If you're holding my ankles and I try to lift you with my feet, that's very weak. Bicycles are for pressure, helicopters are for flailing and surviving that kind of blender. But you should be there how long in a real fight? <laughs> Milliseconds, yeah. Yeah? yeah? 
So the next thing we're going to do, everybody kind of felt, yeah, you know what, it feels better to not be surprised. Nobody had their head on the floor. Nobody had their legs open. You were up. If I cannot be all the way standing, the next best thing is to get up to at least three points. And so often we will see this exercise. Propeller work where I, first I go from a shin box, activated by my tailbone, I shin stand. And from the shin stand, I can go back if I need to. From the shin stand, I can propeller my legs. And in isolation, we do it like this to learn the mechanics. But this is because I come up and I say, whoa, I thought I was safe here, but this guy's running in to kick me. So I go down to address him. What's important about the shin stand is it's an in-between. Just like if I do a tactical stand, I go to a shin stand to see if I have time to get up or do I go back down. So what I would like to do in this period, both people are kicking as they wish. Stomping the legs, both seeking the head, hitting whatever you can. You're not allowed to stand up, but you want to see how many times you can shin stand in the middle of it. You can shin stand and immediately go to the other side. You can shin stand and go back to the same side. You can shin stand and stay there for a bit and see what that's like. But as soon as you shin stand, you're less likely to be kicked in the head. You are now, however, more likely to get what? Kicked in the nuts. Kicked in the nuts and punched in the head. Oh, okay. Knee in the face. Yeah. So the two people standing will now put on boxing gloves as well. Oh. Tap a tap, yeah? You can still punch somebody laying down, just like you can kick somebody standing up. It's just less likely. It's open, open. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So the only thing now is you get a little taps. Don't go crazy on the head. Kicking everywhere, punching anywhere. But you want to see if you can get up to learn to feel what that does for my situational awareness. Here, it's hard to be aware there. Here, I can be aware of much wider spectrum. Much wider, and I, if I think something's behind me, I can turn very easily, or I can, I can be in my shin stand, and if I can't see, I can turn and address it. And that's all I want to see. I want to learn to have confidence in my shin stand. Simple, one down, two gloves. Let's go. I will give you a nut shot. with the knees to the face, show them without necessarily smashing them. So now all we're going to do is this, exact same drill, except now instead of just, you can always come up to three points if you need to, right, and you can always go back down if it serves you, but you don't have to anymore. It's only if it works for you. What you do want to do now is you want to stand up. We're going to try to isolate with one particular way of standing up. We're going to try to isolate getting close into somebody and grabbing onto them and trying to hide our head. So you can hide your head wherever you want. Sometimes you may find your head in front. Sometimes you may find it on the outside. If I had a choice, which would I prefer? Outside. Usually going to be outside, right? Because the other one can hit me, the hand can hit me. Very common, those little hooks to the face. But maybe the other two people are there kicking you and kneeing and they're all lined up. So Suddenly you get bumped and that doesn't work. Maybe there's a wall right here and you can't go there. Maybe this is just where you arrive. If you're going to be here, what can you do to minimize the likelihood of this leaving the ground and that having good firing power? Frame out. Stumble. Even less. Yeah, push them on the other side. Always be lifting them onto that leg because that will not be able to leave the ground mm -hmm. and this one is going to be, it's going to be very weak if he does hit. Make sense? Yeah. So, as often as you can, but only when it's available. If I start hunting it down, I'm going to become very vulnerable. Oh, we talk about when we're down on the ground and our arms come out, that's because we're being overwhelmed, we're being surprised. And it should be happening if you're training honestly. I would love, I would love to be able to be here and just always be shielding and come up. But the reality is when you get overwhelmed, if I'm dealing with Devin and he kicks me in the head, that's going to happen. And then you're going to get up. Right? So don't be too hard to judge. Just recognize that we're always flinching it means we're always being surprised. Can we improve that situational awareness or are we just training at the threshold of our capacity. Both are possible. Yeah. So try to grab, climb up, push them off balance, take a breath, go back down. Start over as many times as you can. Punch and kick it. All the way. There we go. That's right. Oh, 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 